on the News Channel 5 Network. This is Sportsline. Welcome everybody to Sportsline here on News Channel 5 Plus. Yours truly, John Burton. Happy New Year, our first Wednesday extravaganza of 2020. I certainly hope you had a great holiday season and a great new year. Uh, it is good to be on the ground here in Nashville after the week I had last week. A week ago, Sunday, I was in Houston for the Titans' final regular season game of the year. Uh, flew back Monday morning, was home for about 18 hours, then right, right back out on the road to Dallas for the uh, Winter Classic on Wednesday. Uh, flew out Tuesday, came back for a day, and then, uh, of course, we were in New England last weekend for the Titans' uh, AFC Wild Card playoff win over the New England Patriots. And they, of course, move on this Saturday in Baltimore to take on the Ravens, the number one seed in the AFC playoffs, 14-2 uh, and two squad, a team that's riding a long win streak a team that looks to be the juggernaut of the AFC but the Titans are certainly thinking upset would love to get your thoughts on this game 737-7767 is the number to call also you can follow me on Twitter at John Burton 32 or at NC5 underscore John Burton and of course you can catch me weekday mornings on WNSR radio uh, from 9 to 11 uh, along with Greg Pogue for the Greg Pogue and John Burton show uh, and uh, we are on, as we said, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And you can catch us on WNSR Radio. You can also download the WNSR app or uh, go to the website WNSR.com. Here, of course, you can go to uh, at NC5 underscore plus. You can always visit our website at NewsChannel5.com. Uh, we have a special section there for News Channel 5 Plus. All of our programming to let you know uh, where and when you can see and hear us. But... I want to know from you, Titans fan, 737-7767. Who you got Saturday night? Sell me on why the Titans can go in and pull a second straight road upset. Uh, they did it last week in New England, of course, and a uh, great uh, effort there by the two-tone blue. And now, it feels weird saying this, but I think the competition ramps up a little bit more uh, going into Baltimore to face Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Speaking of Lamar Jackson, he, of course, the offensive machine for the Baltimore Ravens, over 3,000 yard uh, passing, over 30 touchdown passes, 1,200 yards rushing as well. Uh, he is putting on an offensive show, the likes of which have never been seen since the days of Michael Vick at quarterback. So, obviously, a tough task for Titans defensive coordinator Dean Pease and his squad to try to slow him down and that dangerous Ravens offense. Coach Pease meeting with the media today before practice. I'm sure you're aware of what Lamar Jackson was doing, where you thought, you know, if I get a chance to defend that guy, I might try X, Y, or Z. Or didn't spend a lot of time. Just saw him on film when we were watching, um, you know, a little bit. We'd, we'd catch him once in a while. It was just more than anything else, I saw him on Sports Center every week. Uh, you know, usually some highlight. And uh, just knew he was a phenomenal, phenomenal athlete. And really, I've kind of always stayed in touch with some of the guys from Baltimore. We talk, and, and they just all just raved about him as a player and as a person. So, you know, just that, that, that kind of stuff. I never really thought about any kind of game planning or anything. I think a lot of guys have mentioned the name Michael Vick when they've talked about him. Is, is, is that, does he bring back memories of Vick, or is there anybody that you would compare him to? Oh, I, I think you're going to always compare him to Vic and Tyrod Taylor and guys like that, but I just I think he's kind of in a class by himself, to be honest with you. I think he run running wise, he's he's a phenomenal runner. Um, you know, he's a different type of runner than Watson and all those guys. He's just he's really a. I mean, he could be a tailback for somebody. I mean, it, it just and maybe those other guys could be too. I I just. I see just a lot more moves and just really spins and things that he does that Michael Vick could do all the, some of those things, but I just he's uh, uh, he's just a phenomenal player. Does 
Marcus's RPO background uh, help you at all in being able to simulate Lamar on the in the scout team against? Well, it's certainly better. Yeah, I mean, obviously, him being able to run some of that stuff helps us a little bit in practice. Uh, how much you know? It, the hardest, the biggest thing in practice is not only the, simulating the quarterback, but it's actually simulating all the blocking and the scheme because it's different for our old linemen too. All those guys have to do it off a card, and things move once the card. The card looks great when it's standing there stationary, but all of a sudden things move and doesn't look quite the same. Don't block it quite the same. And they're used to Baltimore's offensive line. Joe D's got them schooled up on how to block movement and stuff like that. So, you know, sometimes out here we look great. We're all over everything, but you know it's not quite that same way in the game. But going back to your question, Marcus will be is that's certainly a big deal because I, I remember before, you know, whether it be at at Baltimore or at New England, you know, you're trying to simulate some kind of a quarterback like that, and all you got is a drop back guy that's used to doing that. We used to have to take a wide receiver or running back or somebody like that and have to put him at quarterback that week to try to simulate. And it's just, especially when you're talking about actually reading somebody in the op, on the on the zone read, it's hard for somebody to simulate that. You have an offense that could run the ball so well out of 13 personnel, but then turn around and, and pass it the way they can. What, what kind of challenges does that present for you? Well, it's it's a big challenge. You know, as you're trying to. If you try to match up, maybe if you go small to play the pass, they're going to run the ball. If you try to go big to stop the run, then they may throw the ball. I mean, that's that's obviously it's a big challenge. And Greg's doing a great job of not only scheme-wise, but doing a lot with a lot of different personnel groups. How much of what Martindale's doing is rooted in what you left behind? And, and are you I don't know. I, I don't think it would be fair to, to Don to – say one way or the other. I mean, it's his defense. He's they're, they're doing a great job, and whether he's doing a lot that we did, and I probably did a lot that uh, Greg you know, uh, Pagano did and Rex did before that. I mean, there was carryover from everybody, but it's Don's defense, and uh, he deserves the credit. If there's one or two keys, Dean, you think, in, in playing against the zone read and the option, what are maybe the most, one or two most important things? Eyes. You know, you just really got to you got to focus and and eyes and assignment. You know, everybody's got an assignment to do, and it's like option football back in college, and and you got to do your job. If you try to do somebody else's job, usually that's a bad sign. And the other thing is, if you take your eyes off of things that you're supposed to be keying, generally that's that's not going to be a good sign either. If you got to try to hurry up and react to something they've done, and you didn't really get the key. Uh, that's hard, and especially the better the athlete, the harder it is. I mean, he's hard enough to tackle, even if we know where he is and where he's going to be. I've seen guys having defended absolutely perfect, and he makes them miss. I mean, that's just athlete on athlete, and he, he did a better job than the guy trying to tackle him. But the biggest thing is you got to have good eyes, and you got to really be assignment conscious, know what your assignment is, and, and, and do your job, not somebody else's. Change a lot uh, in your defense when you face an offense kind of unique like this, or is there a lot of risk involved if you change a lot of? A lot of well, I think it's it's kind of both. I think you got to take your defense and then just adapt it, hopefully, to what they do and try to make the assignments as easy as you can for them. But uh, you can't just throw your defense out and all of a sudden after playing it for 20 some weeks or two years or five years or whatever it might be you can't all of a sudden say okay well we got three days here we're going to put in a new defense it doesn't work that way you, you, you'll have more MAs and busted plays doing something like that you, you're better off playing your defense and just telling them what they got to look for and if there's some keys try to give them some keys their offensive lines movement pretty impressive yeah, I mean, I know most of those guys and, and guys like Stanley and the, those guys, they're, they're athletic. Joe D's a heck of an offensive line coach, too. I, I have the utmost respect for him, uh, as I did for Dante Scarnecchia last week. And uh, he does a great job with those guys. And Greg Romans, like I say, they they got a good scheme, and those guys know how to run the scheme. Pretty impressive transition. I mean, they didn't come into the league necessarily to run a scheme where they were moving this much. No, but they've kind of adapted to it, and I think the guys that they had were good guys to already be able to put in that system. Maybe better in this system than in a system where they were just, you know, gap scheme and stuff like that. Maybe even more. So I, I think they got a very good offensive line for this system. You mentioned Roman. Last time you went against him in the playoffs, that's all anybody was talking about in terms of the coaching matchup, right? No hardball mentions at all in that game. It was all Roman and, and Pease. 
That was how many years ago? Eight years ago? A whole lot of different guys. I, if you remember watching Kaepernick, he was under center quite a bit. How many times have you seen this guy underneath center? So it, to me, it's a, it's a similar system, but it's not at all the same. This isn't the same defense. That isn't the same offense. There's elements of both to it, but overall, that what happened eight years ago, has no relevance to this one. What was that transition like for you? I mean, I imagine it's like that any time after a playoff game. Obviously a big win on Saturday. How quickly did you forget about that and immediately start? On the plane ride home. Yeah. So had to tab it out looking at Baltimore. And, uh, you know, it was a great win and uh, very satisfying. But it's, you know, it's one step that you're trying to, we're all trying to reach the ultimate goal. And, uh uh, you, you can't really dwell on it too long. You just got to keep moving on. I mean, it's not like my first playoff game was last week. I mean, I've been there a few times and kind of know that, you know, it's just got to it, – it's a playoff game. It was a big game. It's a very important game. But the next one's more important. Jackson had a two-week two stretch against the Browns and Steelers earlier in the year where he was intercepted five times. Since then, he's only been picked off once in the last ten games. What's he done and what have they done to – Cut that, cut that down. I think it's just experience. I just, I don't think it's, it's. I don't think you look out there and say, okay, well they've done a different scheme or done this. That's him just recognizing, making a mistake and then learning from his mistake and not making it again. That's just a player getting better as the season went on. That wasn't like there was a dramatic, okay, we changed this and changed that. That's that's just him getting better from making a mistake. Coach uh, Ingram doesn't play or he's not 100 percent. Does that change what they do offensively at all? No. They aren't this far down the road, win 11 games in a row, to all of a sudden lose one guy. The only one that would happen there is if they took – if eight left and RG3 left, they might change a little bit. <laughs> What's the chance of that happening? So, no, that isn't going to change that at all. You still know some people there in Baltimore. Has enough time, though, passed that, uh, you know, your departure, uh, how fresh is that still at this point? Or is it all focused Saturday night's the only thing that matters? It's focused on Baltimore. It, it's, uh, I will say this, that, that, I mean, I had eight great years there. there. This is not, you know, when I left there, I left there retired. I didn't leave there because I had to or because I wanted to. I left there just really because I was, I was retired and, and was leaving. And so I have the utmost respect for them. Uh, John and I still talk. Coach Harbaugh and I talk. Not not this week, but I mean we we correspond. Uh, a lot of the guys on the staff, a lot of the defensive staff, is almost the exact same as when I was there. Um, so a lot of friends. But it's like you always say: if you go out and play golf, I'd rather beat my brother at golf than I would somebody I don't know. So it's, 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 it'll be, you know, we'll all be keyed up for it and, uh, you know, want to get after them. But at the same time, when it's over, you know, those people are still my friends. What did you end up doing with all the gear you had from there? Did family members still wear any? No, no. Nobody's allowed to wear the gear if I'm on another team. they got to wear our gear. But uh, there's a heck of a lot of people in Michigan and Ohio wearing a lot of Ravens gear that are family members or, and, uh, or friends. I gave a lot of it away. And I kept some, too. Rather jovial Dean Pease, Titans defensive coordinator, speaking to the media today over at St. Thomas Sports Park as uh, he gets ready to try to scheme up the Baltimore Ravens offense led by the explosive Lamar Jackson. Uh, should be an outstanding game. Don't forget, over on News Channel 5, Friday night, 6.30 is our Road to the Championship special. Uh, we'll be live both here in Nashville and in Baltimore to get you ready uh, for the Titans and Ravens game. Uh, Saturday night, the AFC Divisional Playoff game. We'll have uh, an, an in-depth preview and uh, get you all the information you need to know, special features as well. And then, of course, uh, Saturday night, we'll have pregame coverage live from Baltimore. Myself, Steve Lehman, uh, the entire crew will be there live uh, from uh, the stadium there in Baltimore to uh, further preview the game. And then, of course, stay with us after the game, which you can watch on News Channel 5. We'll have complete postgame coverage, interviews, uh, and analysis as uh, we go along. Titans and Ravens.
begins the renewal of a what was a bitter rivalry in the old AFC Central days. And of course, these teams had some memorable, game, memorable games in the playoffs as well. All right, bottom of the hour, I want to remind you that Robbie Stanley, our buddy from uh, NHL.com, he covers the Nashville Predators. Of course, we're going to uh, have him on. He will call in and tell us about uh, the new head coach, John Hines, who had his debut last night for the Preds, a 6-2 loss at Bridgestone Arena to the Boston Bruins. Uh, the Preds in Chicago tomorrow night to play the uh, Blackhawks. And uh, Robbie Stanley will join us at the bottom of the hour. But when we come back, more Titans talk. We're going to hear some more interviews as we get ready for Saturday night's big playoff game. And, of course, your phone calls are welcome as well. Would love to hear from you tonight, 737-7767. If you're just sitting there watching me, why don't you call in? Let's chat. We're back after this.